Hello, and welcome to Big Red Journeys. I am your host, Big Red, and on today's journey, we're here at Balboa Park to check out the all new San Diego Comic Con Museum, specifically also the new exhibit, All About Spider Man. We're here just a few days before the start of Comic Con San Diego 2022. I'm very excited. What a better way to kick off the whole Comic Con week than by checking out the museum of its namesake, right? We're going to check out all the exhibits that's currently on display. The new Spider-Man one, Beyond Amazing Spider-Man, the exhibition. I'm excited for this one. In fact, I am wearing my Marvel t-shirt appropriately, right, for the occasion. So if you care to follow along with me on this journey, let's go. Okay, heading on into the Comic-Con Museum. This is going to be my first ever visit here. It's only been open to its full extent here just recently, about a month or so. But now I'm coming in to check it all out and they have this really cool exhibit. This is the main draw right now, Beyond Amazing Spider-Man the exhibition this is probably its first real big exhibit that's been here at the museum there's been a, a few smaller ones and there's still some current small ones here but this is the first big one and of course it matches perfectly in time for comic-con just gonna step in here we're greeted immediately there's the spider-man exhibit just to our just straight ahead of us to the right oh look at that a big old Funko version of the toucan the comic-con museum mascot and a small exhibit there at Pac-Man. To our right and to our left, of course, is a gift shop. No place is complete without a gift shop. These are the current prices here for the Comic-Con Museum. And the $30 does include the Spider-Man exhibit. And something special has happened that correlates with Comic-Con that's here. Spider-Man is being officially inducted to the Comic-Con Museum Character Hall of Fame on July 20th. So I just found out that there's this cool little element that you can add to your experience here at the Comic-Con Museum. Sign up for a free scavenger hunt today. There's two different scavenger hunts. One is kind of like a find out where everything's at at the museum. You get this one completed, you actually get a pretty cool little Comic-Con Museum pen. Look at that. And then this one right here, this is what they call the expert level one. And you do this when you answer some questions that you have to go through the museum to find the answers for. But look at the prize that you get at the end. This really cool Black Panther movie poster. That's, that's pretty cool. That's worth it. And again, it's free, guys. It's free. Oh, look at this. This is exciting. Greeted with large reproductions of some of Spider-Man classic scenes. And look at that. Got a full-size Spider-Man that's popping out of the wall right there. Ooh. Got the funky little lights playing out here. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at that. One of Spider-Man's nemesis is Doc Ock. So the background scene changes every so often and they also put little fun facts up here. So here is 2014, Spider-Gwen makes her first appearance in Edge of Spider-Verse number two. Along the walls you have uh, some nice little tidbits of history here including some old editions of original comic books here. Here's one, what is this? Uh, mystery where will you be when the spider strikes october of 73 this is a cover art that was done by the great jack kirby very cool as the title says it's a very brief history very brief history of marvel started in 1939 but then and started in 1939 Introducing their first Marvel Comics number one, which introduced the Human Torch and Namor the Submariner. And then probably with the most famous of characters to really come out during that time in 1940, Captain America comic number one. And you can see how especially during the, the uh, little prelude to war that America was about to enter, you see Captain America punching Hitler right in the face. With the two legends of Stan Lee and Steve Ditko behind the helm of Marvel, 
Dan Lee had an idea up his sleeve. And the summer of 62, changed it up with the newly rebranded title of Amazing Fantasy and brought to life a web-slinging, full-mast full marvel of the Amazing Spider-Man. And here it is. They established the Amazing Spider-Man number one, which came out in March of 1963. And look at this. Here is that exact cover right there. The Amazing Spider-Man with the Fantastic Four. Now this is actually pretty cool. There's a TV screen here that's flipping through different artistic versions of the Amazing Fantasy number 15 because that comic book cover was so inspirational for so many comic book artists. Oh, look at this. Spider Pig. I love it. Or I should say Spider Ham. Excuse me. Spider Ham. great Steve Ditko, the other half to Stan Lee's greatness here at Marvel, created and brought to life so many great characters. I'm sure some of them are your favorites here. Here we got Doc Ark, the Green Goblin, Sandman, so many more. And of course, when you think of Marvel, you think of no other but Stan Lee. This is amazing life all these characters, the memories, the fun. We have a lot to thank him for. Who I think was truly Peter Parker's worst enemy, his boss, editor J. Jonah Jameson. Just a word of advice. You come across anybody with that type of haircut, you run, run away as fast as you can. You serious? Here are some items that were actually from the Spider-Man 3 film with Tobey Maguire. There is, there he is, Peter Parker's press pass from the City of New York Police Department. Here is from the front page of the Daily Bugle. That's such the infamous, the upside down kiss. Oh, these are pretty cool. These are actual items worn by Doc Ock, portrayed by Alfred Molina in Spider-Man 2, 2004. Those are some of the welding glasses he wore, and of course, one of the middle hands, or one of the tip ends of the tentacles, the middle robotic tentacles. Unfortunately, only a few years from, unfortunately, after only a few years of Spider-Man's debut, Steve did go left. The truth behind it is still a little, uh, depending on who you ask, some say he had a growing feud with Stan Lee, some with regards to royalty or payments that he was due, but unfortunately he did leave quite a bit of a legacy with Marvel. But to take over the helm was John Romita, who carried on the legacy and stayed with Marvel for quite a long time. Now this is something that's actually very respectable and commended to Stan Lee here. So with the rise, you know, late 60s, 70s, there was also a little bit of a, a need to be part of the public eye and deal with some of the issues such as war, drug, homelessness, whatever the case may be. So Stan Lee actually made an, episode, an issue in 1971 at the request of the U.S. Department of Health where Peter's friend Harry Osborne ODs on pills. And the best part about it is that Stan Lee actually stood up for it because not only was he not supposed to mention anything about the use of drugs or pills in the comic book at all, no reference whatsoever to it, he decided to go against CCA's um, warnings and published the comic book anyways. They were going to find him and get him in trouble, but he got so much good press out of it and of course the message stuck with people that consider like a, uh, a pioneering champion uh, and they actually labeled him as Captain Relevant. And they stuck with him, never did anything to him. 
Okay, now this is a pure treasure. This is a rare piece of history right here. This is an actual typed script for The Amazing Spider-Man number 82, circa 1969. What's amazing about it is that this is probably has been considered probably the only one that survived in existence. Of all the years that Stanley had a Marvel, this is it. Now, what's interesting about it, if you take a look, you know, yeah, there's some sentences in there, but there's a lot of just like half sentence, short sentence, more thoughts than anything. So then he would also kind of just create more of a synopsis of things. And then he would actually have a phone call and talk with his uh, producers and uh, collaborators on the actual finalized product. So they would just kind of create something based upon a synopsis and get the story flowing and fill in the blanks as they occurred. That's amazing. Look at all the various pieces of Spidey merchandise. You got little hand punching Judy style puppets, various comic books and coloring books. Look, this one right here is in Spanish. You got an inflatable TV chair. That is actually pretty cool. I actually want that. Playing cards, some sort of like a little handheld game right there. Uh, so many cool things. Spider Man glasses, a poncho. That is pretty cool. Uh, you can't beat a traditional uh, eight inch action figure. A nightlight. Oh, this one's probably from some, uh, I'm going to guess most likely Japan, but I couldn't tell for sure. Oh, you got a little foam spray right there. and looks like the foam goes out of Spider-Man's mouth. Of course, the Green Goblin. Oh, so cool. And then you got Spider-Man there as the float of the Macy's Day Parade in the 1980s. I think everybody knows the words to this famous theme song. You can actually put up to your and listen to the famous theme song. I'm gonna insert it right now. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches seeds just like guys. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes a Spider-Man. Well, this is something that's very interesting. So I always knew that Spider-Man was associated with New York. You know, he's based in New York. He works at the, the, the newspaper in New York. Everything's about New York. But apparently, the locations and the drawings like even though it was based in New York, there was no buildings or really any referencing to New York. It just kind of was like, oh, it looks like New York, it must be New York type of thing. And it wasn't until 1972 when Ross Andrew took over the drawing capabilities for Spider-Man. And he himself was from New York and decided to actually implement neighborhoods, buildings, landmarks, things that people can actually recognize in Spider-Man. So you never knew this. I never knew that there was a black costume Spider-Man. Apparently in 1982, Marvel took uh, initial concepts from fans, and in one in particular, Randy Schuler, they had a competition. He won, proposing a new stealth ensemble for his uh, favorite hero. The original design was a black with red spider logo, as you see here, but after a few iterations and everything, and they finally developed, came up with the black with white spider. I always thought that was just Venom. You got Spider-Man in video games here. His first one was in 82. Parker Brothers released Spider-Man for the Atari 2600 system. And the next one came in 1990, The, the Amazing Spider-Man for Nintendo's Game Boy. 1991, that's Spider-Man the video game for Sega. Going all the way to current iterations such as all the most recent ones for Sony PlayStation. Now this was my favorite of all the Spider-Mans. Spider-Man 2099, I always just thought his costume was the greatest. I mean, that red over the darkish black blue color and the spikes that came out of his forearms. I mean, what's not to love about this character? So cool looking. And not to mention the fact is that the guy behind the mask, Miguel O'Hara, was in Irish Mexican descent. Ah, uh, here we go. We go into some of the the more recent movies and more recent uh, characters. That's pretty cool. Here we have, is this what I think it is? Yes, it is. It is Tom Holland's actual Spider-Man suit 
from Spider-Man Homecoming 2017 and the Edith glasses from Far From Home. That is, that, that right there, that's amazing. And here you got Miles Morales as Spider-Man from the, from the animation car, uh, movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. One of my favorites, that was a very good film. The cute blonde who can also kick your butt. Gwen Stacy is Ghost Spider. And here we're stepping into the Spider-Verse. Here we got some of the very many characters, iterations of the Spider family. You got Silk. You got Spider-Ham. Ben Riley is a Scarlet Spider, Spider Zero, the Doppelganger, Spider Ling, Madam Web, Spinneret, Spider Man 2211, Penny Parker and SPDR, Spider Girl, Rana, Spider Man Noir. Spider Woman, Spider UK, you can always tell him because, I mean, his chest has got the Union Jack, Spider Woman, oh, Spider Ham, there he is, Peter Porker, hmm. and Spider Man, Supa Diamond, if that's how you pronounce it, oh, one more, Spider Punk, and look at this. We're given a proper goodbye by a life-size version of Spider-Ham. Well, thank you, Spider-Ham. I did enjoy this exhibit. Thank you very much. And of course, there has to be a gift shop at the end of such a good exhibit like this. You got things such as like, oh, look at these pretty cool puzzles that have different comic book covers on there. Of course, various different action figures of Spider-Man. Plush Spider-Mans. You got some cool t-shirts. You got encyclopedias, Marvel. So not just Spider-Man, but the whole Marvel line. More puzzles. Here's some Spider-Man t-shirts right over there. Oh, look at this one. This one's got a, this one's a Japanese right there. Even has the character in the traditional, you know, Japanese anime style cartoon. Need yourself an Ultimate Spider-Man mug. They got you covered. Well, one last surprise before we exited. These are actual movie props. So we got the uh, Green Goblin mask and pumpkin bomb from seen in Spider-Man, the 2002 film. The Spider-Man web shooter from The Amazing Spider-Man in 2012. Wow. This big gargantuan thing is a lizard head sculpt from the Amazing Spider-Man 2012. And this is pretty cool. Green Goblin's actual glider from Spider-Man 3, 2007. Now we're walking upstairs here. There's uh, three levels to the Comic-Con Museum. It's very weird considering this is uh, quite different than when I was here for the old sports museum. It is interesting. We got some artwork. The art of Dave Stevens, who you may look more known to as the artist of the Rocketeer. So we have some of his artwork here. A self-portrait. A self-portrait business card, circa 1973. Miss Bethy. Man with Sash. Makes sense. Planet Comics number one cover, 1987. Okay, interesting. And they got this little tiny, they got this. And there's also the exhibit on Archie. Now I will admit, I honestly don't think I've ever really seen any comics of Archie. It was definitely before my time, that generation, but I can still appreciate it. Definitely part of comic, TV, and even movie lore. So here we have all the classmates, Archie himself, Jughood Jones, 
Reggie Mantle, Betty Cooper, Veronica Lodge, and all the others. Then we got some original comic books, some ink and paints. Oh, there is a man of the hour himself right there. Oh, look at this one. 60s version of Archie and the Gang. Hey, Jughead, eating a cheeseburger. I would expect nothing less. And barefoot, too. Yeah, it was the times of the 60s, right? Pop's Chocolate Shop. I'm assuming that's Pop. Would make sense. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. There's a, there's a cover right there where it looks like Pop's right on there. We got some more here. This is the Archie Band. Now, I know, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe, didn't they? Well, there was a band called the Archies, and they did a song, Sugar. But I remember seeing a music video, and it had the Archie cartoon characters in the music video for it. Was that the same thing, or am I thinking of something different? Let me know in the comments. Sabrina the Teenage Witch? That was part of Archie? I never realized it. Huh, I always thought it was just its own thing. Archie at Comic Con. I'll be there in a few days. Oh, is that a little baby Archie? Oh yeah, look, there's a thing called Little Archie. Huh, that's funny. And then I know there's that new show, River, or not new, it's been around for a while. But I guess Riverdale, which is the live action version of Archie. So. Can't say I've ever seen the show either. There's an autographed football here. I'm not sure. Is that part of like maybe the uh, maybe the cast and crew from the from the show? There's no cards around it. Hmm. Hopefully it is. Joe seen the Pussycats. They're part of Archie as well too. Man, I am learning so much more right now. Look at this. Oh, you know what? I remember seeing some of these small guys right here. These little digest. I remember seeing these before when I was a kid. Huh. Oh, that was unique and interesting. Not really my cup of tea. Oh, speaking of cup of teas, there's some uh, Betty Page art. Oh, more art from uh, Dave Stevens. There's a Rocketeer with a Betty Page. Betty's Boudoir. A oh, paper doll version of Betty Page. The signed photo. That'd be pretty cool. And some more work from Dave Stevens. Oh, okay, these are actual Rocketeer covers. That was actually one of my favorite movies. That It's a very underrated film, but I enjoyed it. I know how it's, you know, in pop culture lore, it's kind of a plop, but I enjoyed it. Great film. Also, that costume was badass. I mean, the helmet, that Art Deco design of the 30s, 40s. I mean, look at it. It's cool, that little Airstream style helmet. You got the rocket on the back. And even the, I don't know, this isn't like a double breasted vest or jacket or something like that, but it's like the concept that you come up with this look, it's kind of futuristic y, but also retro. I don't know how to describe it, really. Look at this. That's a replica of the jetpack and helmet of the Rocketeer. Now, is that Adam Savage from Mythbusters? I really hope it is. That's pretty cool if it is. Uh, and of course, merchandise from the film The Rocketeer. Postcards. I remember this postcard right there. Oh, look at that VIP all access pass. That might have been from the premiere. Oh man, I remember this from Pizza Hut, the little personal pizzas they have for kids. I remember that so much. And I even remember the cup. I actually had one of those. Oh, the feels right now. Oh, these have to be from the film. Yes, they are. Movie props from the actual film. I remember the, the card, Jenny's picture there, Jennifer Connelly. Looks like this is a, a South Seas Club napkin. Jenny's picture. 
We have a framed picture of PB, Jenny, and Cliff. Chaplin Field Contestant Blue Ribbon. The Buttons. Bigel's Air Circus Button. Judge Button. The GB Gold Button. And now heading downstairs for the last of the main exhibits. Not a lot down here, just have uh, a few pieces of item here. Here's a nice big sculpture of Batman in black and white. So this is actually an ode to the masquerade. It's a competition that's held every time at Comic-Con. Very big deal. So the people spend blood, sweat, tears, and money on these things. And here are some of the entries in the past that have happened. Look at this cool Superman, Captain America, Doctor Strange and Batgirl. They, these look like movie replicas to me, to be honest with you, they're so good. Such strong detail. And then downstairs on the third, on the bottom floor, there's also a small theater. And here's a little menu of uh, shows that they have running. Looks like they have a Comic-Con sizzle reel, Batman Experience, Pac-Man Hall of Fame induction, Wonder Woman Character Hall of Fame induction, and Spider-Man the Exhibition. All no longer than 30 minutes for the Pac-Man one. And at least at this moment. Plenty of spots available. And the final exhibit that we're checking out is the one dedicated to that pizza mouth guy. Oh, look at this, pretty cool. The TV is not working right now, but I'm assuming they have a, a large version of the game playing there. They got some toys. Oh, little video games here. Are the games free to play with? I think they're free to play. Oh yes, look at that. Look at that, okay. I've never been very good at this game, but we'll give it a try. Oh, oh boy, there's a ghost. See? Oh, 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 there we go. Get those. Oh, see? Never that good with this game. But that's okay, free to play. A pinball machine, but unfortunately it is out of order. Oh, look at this. Displays of the actual opening screen designs. Oh, when they actually created the game. Look at this. Pretty cool. And they got some more games for you. Pac-Man's Pixel Bash. Ms. Pac-Man. And Pac-Mania. And look at this, a vintage lunchbox, thermos, and some of the original video games. And of course, again, you have to stop at a gift store before you leave, right? They got a little bit of everything here. Magnets for the museum. Various art books, comic books. Create your own comic books. Ah, Wonder Woman, 80 years of the Amazon warrior. I'm going to think that because I know that they're having the, the Spider-Man induction on Wednesday, uh, well, the first night of Comic-Con, so I imagine they have a table here. That's probably going to be the setup for the private signing that they're going to have of the special guest, whoever that may be. And look at this. I was actually here for the release of this print by one of my favorite artists, Shag. I have a couple of his pieces. This is called the Thrilling Threesome. Plus one. Can't say Fantastic Four. And you got some Pac-Man items there. Water bottles, books. Some tiki mugs. Oh man, I think I need that Comic-Con Tiki mug. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Some more. Okay, there's some books here about the Amazing Spider-Man, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Owly. Oh, look how cute that guy looks. Archie, of course. And it looks like you can actually get some prints of Dave Stevens' art. Some are a little too risque. Well, that is going to do it for today's journey here at the San Diego Comic-Con Museum. I had a great time. I hope you did as well, too. It's fun to finally be here getting to check out the museum after, you know, being under construction for so many years, COVID and everything. I'm very glad that it's finally here. Comic-Con is also this week, so I'm excited, looking forward to that. So what a great way to kind of get into the Comic-Con spirit with being here at the Comic-Con Museum. So if you're new to the channel, first of all, give this video a big thumbs up for me. Second, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And third, hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever there's a new video that comes across on the channel. 
And as always, feel free to follow me on social media at Big Red Journeys on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So for me to you and Spider Ham, thank you, and I'll see you on the next journey. Bye bye now. Spider Man, Spider Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches seeds just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider Man.